looks like we have just about everybody that registered. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Asha, is that all right if I go ahead and get started? Great. Okay. So I want to welcome all of you to our Business and Leaders Luncheon. Um, these are monthly occurrences. We took a couple of months off at the heat of the COVID, but now we figured out how to do it virtually. But those people that stuck with us were really important, and most of them were sponsors, and that's wonderful. So I want to thank our sponsors at this point in time. Our Business and Leaders Luncheon sponsors are the Boeing Company. If it's not Boeing, you're not going. I heard that this morning. I thought it was so clever. Columbia Bank, who was uh, very successful in, in helping a lot of small businesses through the SBA process with their PPP money. So thank you, Columbia Bank. Portland General Electric, PGE is also a sponsor. And as you know, that during the height of the COVID, they forgave a lot of the, um, the folks that, that owed money to PGE to keep the lights on. And we need them to keep the lights on. Gresham Barlow School District is also one of our sponsors. And you know the, um, the uphill battles that they have with educating our children. <clears throat> they are a partner and a sponsor of the PLT. And I'd also like to thank Metro East Community Media, who is also, also a sponsor of this. We are recording and so are they. And you'll be able to look at this uh, particular event at a future date. We'll let you know when that date is by, by our website. So I want to thank our sponsors um, because they did continue to support us and are helping us with these virtual luncheons and are sponsoring the upcoming luncheons, which I will talk to you about at the end of our, and our time together. Today is all about education and business partnerships. <laughs> Many of you know that I have seven grandchildren. My oldest grandson is um, headed off to college in uh, just a month. And when he was in the eighth grade, he and I took a tour of the Gresham Fire Department. There was something about that tour that didn't have anything to do with him being with his grandmother, but there was something about that tour of the building and of seeing the living quarters from the fire um, in the fire department and that fire truck just waiting to be started that got him excited about his future and in the in that field. He applied to be a fire cadet, which he learned about at the, on that tour, and he was accepted and spent the next two and a half years going through their program. And now he's headed to Central Washington to pursue a career as an EMT. So in the eighth grade, he got excited about his future. My next oldest grandson will be a junior at Barlow. He loves construction related things big and small if he's not taking a computer apart and putting it back together for someone then he's taking something else apart and rebuilding it my guess is he's headed into the trades those early experiences with good role models is very healthy for our students and it's also beneficial to the business community our work ready program is not just about workforce development that is a key component of any chamber but it's also key that we have personal development, personal development of our students and personal development of our businesses and, and have them see them as role models. Today, you're going to get to meet examples of strong partnerships and great role models for our children. I'm gonna introduce all three of our speakers at the same time so that I don't interrupt their floor presentation. But I also want to let everybody know that is uh, watching this, that if you go down to the question and answer tab down at the bottom, you can put a question in there and they'll address it as uh, best that they can at the end of the presentation. So first I'd like to introduce you to Asha. If it can be done outdoors, Asha's doing it. Clamming, crabbing, fishing, hunting, mushroom hunting, finding crawfish in a creek, a native Oregonian by way of India, Asha grew up in a rural southern Oregon town, but she only learned to hunt and fish about eight years ago. She's a graduate of Oregon State University, and Asha spent the first 10 years of her career with youth. She worked with youth with autism, the youth opportunity, and youth and rehabilitation, as well as she helped build and run the summer works and work experience for youth programs. She also took an opportunity to experience Cabela's in Tualatin as their marketing manager for three years. The chamber hired Asha last fall as our very first work-ready director. 
working with businesses and educators to build a strong, vibrant community. She's developing this brand new program to help educators and students get and stay connected with businesses and for businesses to get and stay connected to students for their work and for career opportunities. The next speaker will be Erin Boche, and I hope I'm co correctly pronouncing that. Boche, it's very French or something. Erin, is that close? It's it's Bouchain, but that Boucher. Was close okay, Boucher. I'm trying. I will try harder next time. Um, he's you. the workforce development manager at Associated General Contractors. They have about 830 member co companies. AGC is the only trade association representing the full range of commercial construction companies from industrial to building, from heavy highway to multifamily residential. They do the full meal deal. And their membership is primarily small to mid-sized contractors. About 69% are under the $5 million mark. Previously, Aaron worked with Impact Northwest, connecting youth to skilled trade careers in the manufacturing sector. And our third speaker today is Stacy Llewellyn. She's the controller of Portland Lease Crutcher Lewis. Lease Crutcher Lewis is the recent contractor and remodel of San Barlow High School right here in town. Stacy spearheads the accounting department and performs financial analysis for Lewis, Oregon operation. She has more than 20 years of experience in construction finance and administration. She loves to find efficiency improvements for better decision making. And I love that when I saw that in her bio. We all need that. She serves on the board of directors for AGC Columbia, Oregon Columbia chapter, and she's the chair of the Construction Workforce Coalition. Asha, Aaron, and Stacy are going to be our amazing speakers today at the Business and Leaders Luncheon. So Asha, the floor is yours. I'm going to go ahead and say good afternoon to everyone. Um, I think we're hovering right around noon, so we'll just chalk it up to afternoon. Um, in a minute, I'll share screen. I want to take a minute to thank uh, Aaron and Stacy for joining me in this presentation. Um, Aaron and I uh, were fortunate to work together many years ago at ERCO, and um, it's been a great joy to reunite with him and his work in workforce development. Um, Stacy is, and I don't know if you mentioned this, the chair of the Workforce Coalition at uh, AGC. Um, or for I should say Associated General Contractors and they're both doing what I believe are pretty innovative things. I'll start by telling you a little bit about my program, what we're doing and kind of where the rubber meets the road and then after that I will turn it over to Aaron to talk about an industry association side and then Stacy to talk about the pathway program uh, that they participated in with Gresham Barlow School District. A couple of thanks, I have a few people on the phone. Um, they're helping shape this program. Carla Gay, Zach Ramberg, and Kalani Balfour are all on this call um, and this webinar as well. They're three members of my advisory board that are also helping shape this work. Um, the last two members are Mike Anderson of Reynolds and uh, Mayor Carolyn Eccles of the City of Gresham. So again, thank you to them for attending. I'm gonna share my screen and uh, Aaron and Stacy. I really genuinely hope that this goes well. Come on. Okay. Can you both see that? I cannot. I'll bet you it would help if I actually shared my screen, huh? There it is. Good job. <laughs> I can present a slideshow. Yay me. All right. So Work Ready 2020, it's a division of career-linked learning. Why does it say that? Um, it says that because part of the funding that associated with my position is from Perkins. Perkins has to name things. Uh, it's Perkins funding. And uh, so it's work ready 2020 because as we go out into the community and develop relationships with businesses, sometimes having a really wieldy name is a little uncomfortable. So work ready 2020 East County's workforce future. 
Introducing where industry and education intersect. Uh, why do I say that? I say that because industry and education intersect in a lot of ways, not just from the workforce development side, but where people play, where people work, uh, where parents come to pick up their kids, where kids spend time, as well as students getting you know, regular high school jobs or trying to make an extra buck. So all of this contributes to workforce. And today you'll hear from the three of us, as I mentioned, uh, we're from very different agencies really with somewhat different agendas, but we're united in commitment. And again, myself, Asha Aiello, Aaron Bouchain, and Stacy Llewellyn. East County and Opportunity. So my position, uh, and I might cover this in a later slide, I rearranged my slides this morning. Uh, East County and Opportunity, there's some common complaints surrounding workforce development in East County. It's not that it's not being done. There's definitely strong partnerships, there's strong programs, but my part of my job was to bring it together. My position was created as a combination of three school districts, Reynolds, Gresham Barlow, and Centennial, along with the City of Gresham, Multnomah Education District, and Mount Hood Community College. Uh, all coming to the table to say it would be important if there was somebody that was a facilitator. If somebody could translate the language of, of education and the language of industry to help kind of streamline a lot of those opportunities, that would be great. And there's a few things that we struggle with in East County. One is lack of talent in the workforce pipeline. Again, it's not that the talent isn't out there, it's just directing them to the right areas. Uh, a common complaint in the construction industry, which I'm sure Aaron will share more about, is that the many of the Apprentices don't start until age 28, and it isn't that students are interested, it's kind of the way the funnel goes and the opportunities are that maybe they need a chance to work and put a roof over their head while they're going through apprenticeship programs or even other programs such as healthcare, but they reach it at a later point in their life. So how do we address that? How do we address the lack of skilled employees for specific jobs? As I'm sure we all know, there's a skills gap right now um, for construction, manufacturing, healthcare. There's a lack of skilled employees, and not all of those address four-year jobs. Sometimes it's a two-year diploma. Sometimes it's a certificate program. So what do we have here in East County that we can already leverage? Um, potential employees lack employable skills, such as flexibility, willingness to learn, and work ethic. That's something that curriculums, such as the world of work or the new world of work out of uh, San Francisco, are working to address, looking at a K-12 through pipeline, which is what my program is envisioning. Uh, working with students at the elementary, middle, and high school level to explore careers. It doesn't mean we're diving into really deep, deep things during kindergarten, but we might just be talking about what does a fireman do? What does a police officer do? What does someone in healthcare do? What does it look like to build something, even if that's just a birdhouse? What does that look like in your future? Again, I've talked a little bit about why my position was created and how it was created. Uh, what needs to change? So educational, education, educational institutions need an understanding of how and when to engage with industry. Oftentimes, um, there are amazing educators with great relationships, but oftentimes they're overwhelmed. They have needs they need to meet within the schools. They have students' needs they need to meet. And often it's a lack of maybe developing a relationship or not the time to develop a deep relationship with an industry partner such as Stacy or Aaron and his members. It's not an unwillingness. It's a, hey, I really need a speaker, but I don't necessarily have the same understanding of your needs as you do as mine, or even not an understanding of the needs that meet together. Centralizing communication and streamlining the ask from education and both industry uh, would and can reduce partner fatigue. It was part of the reason my position was created. It was part of the reason to have someone that understood both worlds. I've worked with Opportunity Youth, like Lynn said, for over 10 years, uh, youth with autism. And I've also worked on the kind of business and, and recruitment side where I had to work a lot and figure out what they needed. And I'll, honestly, a lot of it was figuring out what the business wanted to do. I had an amazing amount of network of partners at ERCO. A lot of that work was started with sitting down with the business and saying, what do you really want? What do you really need? You want it, you have heart for community. I love that. But what is within your capacity to actually do? So why should the business community care about workforce? Besides workforce, which we'll put that aside for a second, um, there's a lot going on outside of that. Uh, you know, Aaron, I stole some of your uh, facts from one of your presentations during the Workforce Coalition because I thought they were so important. Um, in the construction trades alone, the recession saw 40% of the workforce gone. I'd like to give credit to Aaron and his partners and Stacy and, and her partners with AGC because they really have attacked this next potential recession, potential, you know, losing workers in a way that's very innovative, which they'll tell you about. Our program, Work Ready, is designed to engage uh, stakeholders at all level of entry. And what do I mean by that? 
I mean that if you decide to work with our program, it'll be my job to partner with you to say, hey, where are you at? Do you have the capacity to do three career days a year? Is that two hours a day? Is it I can come spend a whole day? Is that not possible? Can you not pay your employees to do that? Okay, let's talk about, can we do something virtual? Can we do a quick walk around your area or your place of business, do some photos and have you do a Zoom call or even just an event where you record what's going on and students have access to it later. I want to make this work for you. It's one of the ways that we're innovating during not only COVID, but making sure that employers can get into the, the schools and the educational institutions in a way that's teacher friendly and student friendly and can be used multiple times throughout a curriculum. Engaging with my program allows the following. You, you can direct your future workforce. It sounds silly to say that, oh, you know, a third grader I might see in, you know, 15 years. That third grader, as Lynn mentioned, very much might follow that career path because they've been introduced to it at different touch points along the way. You can directly influence skill preparation earlier in the pipeline. You start earlier, you share your work, the path, and the options that, and opportunities that expose youth that youth may never have considered. And by this, I mean, you know, construction, as, as Stacy is a great example of, construction is not all people out there swinging a hammer. Somebody's got to control the finance. Somebody's got to control the HR. Somebody has to market the team. I mean, it's not that, that a construction company just falls into somebody's lap. They've got to market them. They've got to be branded. Um, and they have to be able to sell themselves in the community just like anybody else. Hands-on opportunities, which I'll explore here in a few minutes, um, provide youth a way to engage, ask questions, and think outside of their norms. And I think it's the next slide. But uh, yeah, so Carly Gay and her... Uh, team at Gresham Barlow School District, along with Lisa Crutcher Lewis, Lewis did a great construction pathway program. It's an example of the great work being done already in East County that'll be integrated into other programs as well as other things. Again, working with the students to, in schools to figure out what's best for them. It feels overwhelming. You know, where do you start? How do I contact the schools? Would my business or industry even interest youth? It's hard sometimes to look at an accountant and say, hey, this is totally fascinating. But honestly, some students really have a great head for numbers. Some students really love math. Other students don't, and they want to do something different, like work with their hands or work outdoors in an eco career. All of those things are great, but they need the opportunity to start exploring those at a young age. So I'd like to share with you, again, thanks to Carla and her team, a video that was produced uh, by the Gresham Barlow School District and I believe Metro East Community Media um, with about the Construction Pathways Program and the participation of Fortis and Lise Crutcher Lewis. It involves all three educational levels. Again, one of the goals of my program that I'm working with, um, elementary, middle school, and high school. And they created projects together with the companies doing a lot of work with the teachers ahead of time to bring the teacher input to the company and start in a place that really felt tangible to them. Thanks to the Gresham Barlow 2016 Bond and Measure 98, we have embarked on an ambitious program called Pathways to Career Success. We decided to pilot a concept to support the development of Pathways to Career Success at Powell Valley Elementary, Gordon Russell Middle School, and Sam Barlow High School. Teachers from Gresham Barlow School District and industry professionals from Fortis Construction and Lise Crutcher Lewis participated in an educator industry exchange to learn from each other and develop career-linked learning opportunities. Students at Powell Valley Elementary School learned about the design process by working with mentors from Fortis Construction. Students were tasked with designing a bench that created an outdoor learning space at their school and pitched their final designs to an industry panel. And nowhere in the standards does it say learn how to make a bench. So my job is, okay, what are you doing during this bench project that fits into all of these standards? Like all the measurements we did, all the tools we used, that was my favorite part. The people that I was working with would came up with ideas that I would never really think of. They were able to take math and science and, and thought together and what they do in their day-to-day -day activities and put it towards a project to make it work. Throughout the Pathways to Career model, teachers and industry partners develop project-based learning that integrates academic standards with career exposure. The curriculum and activities that are developed will be shared and replicated with common grades throughout the district to ensure all students receive multiple opportunities to explore various careers. Students at Gordon Russell Middle School collaborated with Fortis Construction to design and model a house. Students applied math skills to ensure that their projects were to scale and presented their final designs to an industry panel. 
several designs were selected to be loaded into a software program so that students could virtually explore their house. You got to see the science, the science piece, you got to see the technology, you got to see the engineering part of the, the, the word STEAM, uh, you got to see the A, which is the arts, and the mathematics. Integrating different subject areas uh, and not having them taught in silos, and you're able to blend those things together, again, that makes it all the more relevant uh, for students, it makes it all the more practical for a teacher, trying to teach all those things at the same time, um, and it allows kids to shine at different points throughout the project. As the Pathways to Career Success program grows, students will learn about multiple different professions and job opportunities. One of the desired outcomes for students is that they can begin on the path to developing professional goals. Everybody has different learning, learns differently, I guess, especially when you bring in the hands-on elements of carpentry. I think it'll help uh, the future students be successful. What we do in class is we just sit down and write and I'm not the best person like that's not what I like to do I like to use my hands and it's nice to see what the outside world's like at what you can do after high school. I'm getting a job soon doing uh, heavy equipment as a apprenticeship over the summer. Real world skills that will be necessary no matter what career you're going into things like problem solving and collaboration uh, you can't put a price tag on that you can't score that on a test. There's all different opportunities uh, within one given career, the marketing side, the business side, the management side. It's really cool for us to learn through the experience of people that are actually out there and how we can apply the things that we're learning in the textbook to the outside world. What we're learning is really what's going to be needed for the career outside of school. And so I think the opportunity to partner with the construction classes and also the marketing group and share my knowledge as a marketing professional is a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity. After that visit to the office, I feel that I know how some businesses are running, how everyone's connected together, how everyone's sharing ideas for different, for different projects and different, and different topics, and it helped me see how a, how a real business works. In terms of having education, having community, and having industry collaborate together, in my opinion, that's the perfect trifecta. It really validates what we as educators are trying to do in the classroom. When it comes to preparing for the future, students often don't know where to start. Through the many opportunities presented by Pathways to Career Success, we will make our students career ready and prepare them with skills that employers want and expect. Pathways to Career Success would like to thank the Gresham Barlow 2016 Bond and Measure 98. All right, so I will turn it over to Aaron again with apologies. I'll put that link in the chat here in a couple of minutes. And, uh, and if everybody decides they really want to hear it, uh, we could probably try a different host. Um, I have a colleague actually at the chamber that we can try with that video link a little bit later. So Aaron, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Um, thank you, Asha. Um, and thank you uh, to the chamber um, for this opportunity to speak a little bit about AGC and, and what we do, and what we see as our our role in, uh, in, in, in this equation. Um, it's also good to see and hear a lot of familiar um, names on the call. So uh, uh, it's, uh, it's good to reconnect with uh, East Multnomah County. Um, so as, uh, as Asha and Lynn have, have said previously, I work for Associated General Contractors. It's the Oregon Columbia chapter. Um, I'm gonna pro provide a little bit more detail about, this, about the organization. Uh, we work across the entire state of Oregon um, in Southwest Washington, so a rather large geographical footprint. Um, we have four key, um, key uh, pillars that we work within. Uh, first is safety, so we have very strong and, and large and robust safety components. We have safety management consultants that work across the state with our contractors. I think it is by far and away the most popular reason why, why contractors are a part of AGC. Um, it's a very successful program. Uh, we also do quite a bit of advocacy in Salem, uh, lobbying, uh, navigating on behalf of the commercial construction industry uh, in the state of Oregon. We also do events as any association would do. So a lot of networking events uh, for our members across the state. And last, and, but certainly not least, is workforce development. And while workforce development has been a pillar of, of AGC, it wasn't until recently, within the last two years, that the organization, and, and Stacy has really been uh, instrumental in this, um, has um, hired uh, FTE to actually do um, more of the work. And so 
uh, two years ago, myself and my colleague Frosty Adams were hired to really move the workforce development initiatives of AGC forward in a, in a, in a more robust and broad way. And so um, we'll talk a little bit about how that has played out um, in a little bit. Uh, so why workforce development? I think we're all pretty familiar with um, the skill, skill trade shortage within the construction um, uh, industry. Uh, just to add on to some of the other stats, um, in a recent survey, 2019 survey, 87% uh, of contractors in, in our, our area, um, Oregon and Southwest Washington, uh, reported difficulty in filling some or all of their skilled uh, worker positions. And 83% of those rated the current skill level of the, of the skilled worker pipeline as fair to poor. So we've got a lot of work to do. Um, to increase not only the quality of workers within the pipeline, but the number of workers within that pipeline. Uh, some of the other issues that we see is just a real lack of training opportunities. And I think this is uh, harder to see in Portland, where we do have um, a lot of a registered apprenticeship presence. We have a lot of the registered apprenticeship training programs that are in Portland. Um, but as you migrate outside of Portland, these training opportunities um, are, are less and less uh, available and present. And so uh, how do we equitably provide more training opportunities for across the state, not only for our contractors, but the people that live in those areas as well. Um, and then one of the things that we, we have really focused on and um, are constantly battling um, is some of the, the negative uh, connotations and stereotypes of, of what it is to work in the skilled trades. And, and so we as an organization and as an industry are really focused on finding positive messages, finding ways to educate um, uh, a lot of different influencers, whether they be applicants themselves, teachers, uh, parents, around the skills, the skilled trade careers and all the benefits associated with that. So that's, that's one of our biggest challenges and something that we've really dedicated a lot of resources to. And then last but not least, um, the system alignment. And, and this is a, a rather um, hefty task, but how do we get everyone that plays within this space across the state? Um, and that includes everyone from ODE, the Oregon Department of Education, um, Oregon Labor and Industries, um, uh, the school districts, um, other workforce development uh, entities, whether they be workforce investment boards or community-based organizations. How do we get that system to more align uh, itself to, uh, to be more efficient and to um, to better meet the, the, the real needs of not only community members and, and people looking for jobs, but also contractors across the state. So that's, that's, those are some of the reasons why we've seen this investment within AGC to really address kind of some of the workforce development issues. Um, and then the next thing I want to touch upon is, is the, the philosophy, or at least my, my, my take on the philosophy or of, of the role of the association and, and connecting industry and education, but, but workforce development in general. Um, and I, I think that, I'm glad to see AGC really take this step forward, but I think it, an association like AGC has a, a very strong and impactful role to play within the workforce development sphere. Um, I, I previously it was mentioned that I worked for Impact Northwest, which is a nonprofit, and I managed a, 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 a manufacturing-based uh, program. And a central key component to that program was developing relationships with employers. Um, because that program will not exist uh, without uh, industry support and their involvement. Um, but that was really hard because I work for a social service nonprofit and what, what's a social service nonprofit doing trying to bring kids to an industrial area to teach them about skilled trades? It didn't make sense. Um, and despite that, I think we were pretty successful in the work that we did. But as I, as I transitioned to AGC, I really saw the power and, and the impact that, that AGC had because it had access to so many to contractors that were interested and, and, and wanted to play a role in, in finding solutions to these, these workforce challenges. And so I think that there is a real key role for AGC to play here. And, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to to say that that is, that is an easy process because I would say, even though we have 830 members, maybe only 10% of those are engaged in, in any of our activities that relate to workforce development. And so we really have a lot of work there to grow engagement within our own association. Um, but having said that, I, I do think that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity to connect with our members and get them more engaged in solutions that are ultimately going to 
increase the pipeline and bring more quality skilled workers in, into, um, into training systems or in, onto job sites across the country or across the state. Um, next slide, thank you. So I, I wanna touch upon um, a few things that, that AGC is helping to facilitate or lead. Um, we do a lot and I'm not gonna touch upon all that here. Um, but I, I want to highlight some of the things that are either important to the association and our contractors or um, things that we're, we're, we're currently working on. Um, and so one of, the, one of the things that has come up more recently is, is, is building bridges into middle school. Um, we know that a lot of kind of the first touch place uh, with a lot of these activities at the high school level, and, and that makes sense because you have construction programs of study and you have career coordinators and counselors that are all working to this. But we hear from a lot of our education partners that starting in high school is too late. We need to go younger. Uh, we need to get um, more young people informed and aware of these, of these jobs. And so in addition to the work that um, at least Crutcher Lewis and Fortis were doing at Gresham Barlow and, and, and uh, connecting with the middle school there. We've also been active in the in for all programming. And so this is a, this, the, specifically the program is called STEM Connect and we've helped get our contractors involved. And it's a simple, I don't wanna say simple, it's a, it's a the, the program um, is really geared towards bringing industry and making connections to a particular classroom for an extended duration of time. And so the opportunity there is, is to bring industry into the classroom, um, uh, do hands-on activities that relate to the industry, in this case, construction. And so they're teaching some of the STEM principles associated with those activities. But the other great thing is that they do spend some time connecting these activities to careers. Um, and so it's a great kind of first step um, um, opportunity to raise awareness around the construction sector and, and the careers that are associated with it. Because I don't think a lot of young people are thinking about careers at that point, um, but it's good to kind of, as we said before, kind of uh, facilitate that, 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 uh, that interaction and that first um, uh, uh, opportunity to connect that activity with, with that, an actual career. Uh, the second thing I wanna highlight is something we call the Construction Workforce Coalition. Uh, and the coalition has been um, around for um, a number of years, and Stacy probably knows better than I. Um, I want to say probably five or six years. And the idea behind the coalition was to bring um, all the entities that work across workforce development within the construction sector, um, and that includes school districts and, and workforce investment boards, community college, apprenticeship, pre-apprenticeship, contractors, uh, bring them all together um, and start aligning um, um, programming, initiatives, leveraging resources, leveraging funding, because what we felt was happening was that too many things were happening in silos. And because of that, we were seeing duplication and, 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 or replication of projects or, um, or you know, not necessarily leveraging the, the right resources or inability to leverage resources to, to inform or, or move, move programming forward. And so the coalition... Um, meets every other month, um, and the idea is to bring together these these stakeholders and uh, and really talk about issues or talk about programming, um, and then and then hopefully work towards finding solutions. And I think that's that's one of the things that I took away from the coalition and talking to our contractors who are part of the coalition is they really see it as a as a as a um, an action oriented entity that is geared towards solving problems. And so two examples of that are our educator externship program, which was born out of the coalition. And this program has been um, underway for, I think, four years now and has really grown leaps and bounds over the last couple of years since Frosty took over. Uh, but the idea, uh, what they were seeing with the conversation of the coalition was, how do we get educators more involved and more informed around careers construction? And that wasn't necessarily happening. And so that, the idea was to take educators out two weeks during the summer get them on construction sites, get them learning about uh, careers in construction, um, uh, also facilitating introductions into the aligned training that, that contractors use for their workforce. So going to a registered apprenticeship, uh, community college and university to learn about those problems. And so that program has been, has, has grown quite substantially. It's, it's, it's been a nationally recognized program. 
This year, despite COVID, we were still able to get over 70 teachers out on sites uh, or in virtual learning environments uh, to learn about construction. And so the hope is that they take that experience back into the classroom um, and, 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 and are able to share some of that insight, whether it's, whether it's the math involved at a construction site or the, on a project, or it's the career oriented uh, information uh, that they're also learning. And then the other, the other, the other uh, solution oriented uh, idea that has popped up in the coalition lately um, has been this idea of, of, of utilizing the, the supplier network to better provide entry level jobs. Um, and so Asha mentioned this, one of the, one of the challenges with, with um, the, the, the workforce, the construction workforce system is that the average age of a first year apprentice is 28 years old. And that hasn't changed much in 10 years. And so if we're gonna do all this work at the high school level and then hopefully the middle school level to get young people interested in the skilled trades, we need to better facilitate that transition from high school into a career. Um, otherwise we risk, we, 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 we risk losing them um, to you know, another industry or, or to somewhere else. And so how can we better provide more entry level employment opportunities that align with industry that allow them to build the necessary skills to be competitive, not just for registered apprenticeship, but for entry level work or work within that company as they move up. And so one of our contractors, uh, Watt Seating and Cooling had been working with their supplier, Refco, to develop entry level positions at the supplier level that then could transition into registered apprenticeship once the contractor is, is available. And so this, this was supposed to kick off this summer, um, but COVID has unfortunately um, um, squashed that plan. But um, I, I think it's a pretty interesting idea. And I think the, the coalition meeting where we talked about this, there was a lot of interest and support. And so this is something that, that we wanna see. Um, we'll be working with Lauren and, and, and Arevco to hopefully uh, get that program backed up once, once, things, once the environment is, is a little bit more ready to, um, to, to do that. Um, and then I wanna cover two more things, but first the, the, the other thing we've been working on is a construction careers communication plan. And so uh, we've been actively working with a, a third party vendor to help us understand the current uh, challenges that, that we have in communicating construction careers to the, the community, uh, youth and parents, and how can we address that through uh, a communications or marketing plan. And so um, we have a, a, a draft report that uh, we're hoping to have done soon and, and we'll distribute that to our partners. Um, but I think within that, we'll have a lot of information um, on, on some of these challenges and barriers and, and some recommendations on how to, how to address those. Uh, that report will then inform for AGC the development of a, of a rather robust um, and statewide marketing plan, which we hope to implement with partners across the region um, uh, in the coming months. So we, we hope to have that strategy done by, by October um, and, and have it something ex executable by, by early fall. Um, and then the other thing I want to quickly mention, it's not on here, but I think it's important, is that uh, my colleague and I, Frosty, work through a committee at AGC. It's called the Workforce um, Development Committee, Workforce and Professional Development Committee. And Stacy's a, a part of that committee and she, she's a vice chair. And uh, it's a, we meet once a month. And, and as a workforce practitioner, the fact that I get to meet once a month with a group of contractors, uh, general contractors, specialty contractors, heavy highway contractors, industry associates is incredibly uh, empower, powerful and, and incredibly useful and, and, and helps us inform the work that we do. And I, I just think having access to that industry, and I know as, as whether you're in education or you're training or you do workforce development, that's such a key component to inform what you do and, and how to make decisions on where to go from a programmatic standpoint or just a partnership standpoint. And the fact that we have that, we have access to those contractors, um, I think is, is a really, um, is a unique thing, um, but I, it's, it's incredibly important for the work that we do. And so um, I, I think that is a value add that associations um, in general and agency in, in particular can, can provide to the workforce conversation is, 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 is the insight from industry. Because you know, having done this for the last 12 years, the hardest people to get to the table, and it's not because they're not interested, it's, it's, it's because they're usually too busy, but the hardest people to get to the table are industry. And, and having that at kind of the tip of my finger, I'm so grateful for. And, and I wanna find other ways to really leverage that and, um, 
and expand it as well. So, um, so that's, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. My contact information is there as well. If you have any questions or um, uh, any additional follow-up, um, feel free to, to reach out. Um, Aaron, I just want to clarify really quickly. Is your, is that 505 or 503? Oh, that's 503. Sorry. Okay. So we'll repost all of that in chat a little bit later if you've got questions for Aaron. And we'll, um, when we do present this on our website, we'll make sure that that gets corrected. So I'm not sure if that was my error or not. And if it was, Aaron, I apologize. Stacy, I'll leave it to you. Okay. I think you have my slide. Perfect. Because you'll do a much better job operating it than I will. Uh, so Lee Crusher Lewis giving you a little background on us. We are a uh, mid to large size general contractor in town. We focus predominantly on uh, K-12, universities, commercial office, uh, housing, lar large housing. Um, we are currently out at the zoo again. We did the elephant lands and now we're working on the polar bear, rhino and primate exhibit. So definitely engaged in community projects and just more of your larger commercial work. Um, about what's it been probably around a year or so ago, well, more than a year ago, Aaron brought this opportunity to us to with the Gresham Barlow School because we, as uh, Asha said, we have been working out at Sam Barlow and the Career Pathways program was presented to us. And these are some of the outcomes I thought was important to share just because it's what got us engaged into the process the career and exposure experience into the construction industry. That is key for what we're all trying to accomplish in terms of building that workforce pipeline and building the bridge behind us. And so being able to introduce kids to the industry was definitely an attention grabber for us. You can't, can you hear me? Okay, perfect, sorry, I saw it. Asha and I was thinking perhaps you can't hear me. Uh, the curriculum and activities and, and guiding some of that work for the K-12 experience was exciting to us. And along with that is that project-based learning piece where we could actually show the kids what we're doing and introduce them um, at, a, at a more detailed level than what they may get by reading a book and such. And then also just the mutually beneficial partnership between education and industry. Obviously being part of the AGC workforce uh, development and coalition groups, we've definitely been engaged in that process and that speaks volumes to, to being part of, part of the solution there. And then also just be able to let kids see all the different types of careers that are available in the industry and, and outside the industry, but definitely that career technical piece, the skilled trades is an important um, piece to us because truly I don't think everyone is suited for college. I think kids have different interests and some really want to work with their hands and the thought of sitting behind a computer crunching numbers all day like what I do was, is just not exciting to them at all. And so being able to show different avenues of making a family living and, and be able to support their family in the future is important. And then also having the kids be able to graduate with those dual credits and having just opening the doors to different things where they may or may not decide to pursue, but at least they have that exposure and can look for those opportunities going forward. Next slide, please, Sasha. Okay, so we looked at the program a couple different ways with Sam Barlow. So again, we partnered with Sam Barlow High School. One of the things we did were lunch and learns. And so uh, groups of students would come in, we would provide a construction site tour. Um, the gentleman here is Matt Hockett. He's one of our superintendents and our project management team, project engineers, everyone would get engaged in the process at different times. Um, but they would walk the kids around show them the what was going on at the job which was really cool for them because this was their school so they had a vested interest in it anyway and then they were able to kind of get that behind the scenes look and see what was going on and then afterwards the team would bring in pizza and they do a q a session where the kids got to eat some lunch and talk about the job and there were a few different kids that really did show a lot of interest and stuck around and asked questions and uh, the team really felt like they reached them and, and were able to provide them that input that they needed to maybe pursue a career in construction. 
And then also a big partnership with the CT class tours and, and just the classes in general, trying to help with their curriculum guidance and such. And so those classes definitely were the metals class, the wood carpentry, and the construction class. Um, multiple tours occurred for those programs and just that engagement between the company and the students and the, um, the staff at the school was, was really beneficial from, from our standpoint. Next slide, please. The last area that we focused on also is marketing. So we kind of took it outside of the standard skilled trades and also partnered with the marketing department at the school um, and partnered them with our marketing department. And so we really demonstrated the, uh, inter, in, the um, interaction between operations and marketing in terms of what goes into winning a project, how they work together throughout the entire project. You have project signage and um, different branding opportunities that come up. Usually every project has their own t-shirt. And so really just showing how each, each project team does continue to work with marketing and, and utilize their services and support every day in the company. I believe the students were able to uh, look at the no-go process that we go through when we're trying to filter out projects and see which ones are good fits for us or not. And they also looked at the project proposal design, which are essentially little books when you're done. Um, they're really quite impressive pieces of work and they are what we present to clients. Like we presented it to uh, Sam Barlow when we, when we went to win that project. And so walk the kids through how that works. And then I remember the day they also came into our office for a site tour. And it was great to see them uh, wandering around the office, trying to figure out who does what, and just looking at all the, the, um, the different departments and, and activities that we had going in the office that day. So definitely partnering um, with, the, with the kids all the way around. And I know, uh, Asha was hoping that I would share maybe some tips or takeaways that we had. And, you know, a tip to get involved if you're a company that wants to get involved is just look for a partnership opportunity with a local association. So, for instance, you know, ours is AGC where we have that support. Uh, and it could also be another competitor in town and just bonding together to figure out how to reach some students within your group. And then, uh, you know, proximity is key. Like this opportunity with us at San Barlow, it was our job site. We were already there. We were engaged in the process. It wasn't a whole lot of more effort to extend that reach onto the kids and really have a beneficial impact. And then a simple way to get started is just project tours or site business tours, your location. Let kids come in, see what you do maybe job shadow for a day. Those are always great opportunities to start that process. And I know for our team, they really felt it was a worthwhile experience to bond with the kids. And I really let them showcase what they do every day. And, and we definitely saw that sense of pride come out in everyone that was involved in the process. So it was a definitely initially beneficial experience. And we enjoy, we enjoy doing these things with the local kids and whatever we can do with the community. And I think I'll kick it back to you, Asha, unless you had anything more specific you wanted me no, to cover. Not as of right now. My colleague, I think, is monitoring some of the Q&A, and we'll get back to that. I had a couple more things I wanted to share. Uh, just a couple final thoughts. So, you know, what's next? We talked a little bit or a lot in, in uh, Aaron's case about industry trades associations increasingly embracing uh, a variety of levels of integration. You know, in Stacy's case, the, the businesses are finding new and innovative ways to display career paths while engaging teachers and students. I wanted to mention, um, you know, again, I can't speak highly enough of both of these individuals and their work, but especially when it comes to things like diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, one of the, the most recent meeting of AGC, I had the opportunity to meet the executive director of Latino Built and the executive director of the National Association of Minority Contractors in Oregon. And uh, one of the things that I think is so important is that our youth see people that look like them 
to work in whatever industry they're interested in, especially with the diversity in East County. So it's one of my initiatives with the Work Ready program to engage with not only AGC, but also an AMC and Latino Built to show them in the construction industries, manufacturing industries, hey, there's people that look like you that run businesses um, and can answer anything from specific cultural questions to just general questions if it makes them more comfortable and makes them feel more included. To Stacy's point about the tours, um, I know Carla and some of the others, a lot of it brought a lot of, I'll say equity, but equality when you can literally take the students out of the classroom next door or take the students out of the classroom just down the hall it, instead of transporting. And again, I talked a little bit about transportation is very limited and odd in East County. We have a wide geographic area to be able to provide those those opportunities um not again just in construction it just happens to be our focus today um be able to provide those opportunities in east county is really exciting and in a way that doesn't cost time or a ton of time or teacher or uh, school funding but can actually be available because you can just walk the students down the hall or across the street versus having to put them in a bus and take them 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes across the city. So that's one thing. Again, I mentioned the key example. Uh, work ready to me is the next step for you. So if you're interested in anything I'm doing, Aaron's doing, Stacy's doing, I linked my survey here um, as well as my contact information. And at this point, I'm going to stop the screen share because it looks like we have a question. But Lynn, I'm going to turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you very, very much. Um, that was a fast hour, you guys. <laughs> you put a lot of stuff in there. Um, did you say that you you have some questions that you wanted to answer? Are you going to get them? Yeah, I I see that Kalani has a question. So let me. Okay. Kalani, I unmuted you. I think. Yes. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, I was just hoping you could talk a little bit more about. Um, digital options for work-based learning and other experiences, uh, especially as we move into the uncertainty of next year. I think a lot of our high school programs and college programs are going to be interested in ways to get students um, that kind of engagement that uh, is a little safer than in person. Um. Okay, I can speak to what I'm doing. I know that one of the things that I'm doing right now is working with a few different partners to um, create some video sessions, not only kind of both asynchronous and synchronous, but maybe a few video series on, say, for instance, a culinary program. One of my art, my program partners is a is at Clark College. He's a tenured professor, professor and the head of the culinary program there. And so he's looking at doing a few videos for me. Um, and sharing some of his work on very basic recipes, nice skills, things that students can safely practice at home with families um, that can encompass things that you would find um, no matter what your living or food situation is to talk about careers in the culinary field. Um, we're going to be doing some of the same things with construction. I have an idea about um, in manufacturing as well and doing both kind of the combination of a zoom call where you know I'll use Aaron I'll pick on Aaron and say Aaron talks a little bit about what he does and then maybe does a demo um, so you can see that and it's recorded and shared later as well as maybe a few video series so that that again I'm meeting my program is meeting students and teachers where they need to be and have access to information videos and you know bios and whatever else um, that they can access at any time to work into their own curriculums. Uh, Aaron, Stacy, I'll toss it over to you if you have anything to add. I know one thing that we've been kicking around are virtual job site tours. So figuring out a way to actually go around and film what's going on on site so that uh, people could still see what's going on but not be right there because, again, the, the distancing is a concern. Um, you know, we're seeing that definitely on job sites where folks need to work six feet apart and those types of things. So have, being able to do tours is a little prohibitive um, in certain cases, but those job site, virtual job site tours is something that we're definitely checking into. Uh, just a quick comment. Um, I'm really happy to hear Stacy say that because uh, I think we're gonna need more of that. Um, uh, having had a, I've had a couple conversations and I've been involved in a couple of virtual uh, um, career learning opportunities. 
Um, one was just an interview with a contractor in his office. And the other one was a site tour uh, with just a contractor walking around with their iPad or phone. I forget which one. But I, I think in talking with the, the contractor who did a virtual tour, um, I think we prefer the hand from construction. We prefer the hands-on, you know, being there, right? There's, it's, a, it's a, such a, 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 you know, a, a, you got to feel it. You got to feel a construction site. But we can't do that. Then we need to look at other opportunities. And for this contractor, they said that this might increase their engagement because they don't have to worry about the logistics of getting, you know, 20, 30 kids there. Um, it's easy for one person to walk around a job site with a, with a, uh, with a computer uh, and interview some of their craft workers. It doesn't interfere with their schedule as much. So maybe there's an opportunity to use this as a way to increase engagement uh, within industry to provide more virtual opportunities, but we'll, we'll see. There's another question um, uh, from Al Nadorse from UMA on the call. He says, since many of this on, excuse me, since many of us on this call are not in the construction industry, is there a need for other vertical markets to get engaged? Yes, the answer is absolutely unequivocally yes. I chose to focus on this particular industry for a couple of reasons. One, I feel like my partnerships right now are strongest in uh, construction because of um, a, again, just the people I know and, and where I'm working at, uh, but also because my directive for the work ready program in order to be focused and best serve the community was to focus on social, excuse me, healthcare and construction. Goodness gracious, I need more coffee. Um, in the first two years of the program in order to make sure that there wasn't a scattershot approach. I also have noticed because of COVID, um, opportunities in healthcare are kind of swinging back and forth. Some clinics have had to lay people off while others are really over, um, overwhelmed. And that's an industry that I'm treading carefully in where construction, again, I'll, I'll praise them to say that they really have headed into this with their eyes wide open and have a different approach. And again, I think a lot more innovative. I'll credit Gresham Barlow and the work they're doing. I'm sure Centennial Reynolds are doing really exciting stuff as well. Uh, so those things to me spoke to the construction industry as being a good focus for this. Again, also because it's often harder to get them to the table simply because of the work that they do and the um, rules and regulations, having students on job sites and, um, and workers and stuff like that. So that was why I chose to focus on that. However, there's a need for all industries. Um, it's whether you're telecommunications, healthcare, culinary, there's a need for all of that. We certainly, uh, what we don't know restaurants are going to look like, we do know that there will be a need for food service. We certainly aren't going to stop getting takeout anytime soon. So we need to, to address those changes um, and we need to do that in a manner that's that's both friendly to educators but also friendly to industry. So yeah, your short answer, yes. Uh, looks like there's a couple more questions. What types of efforts, uh, Leanna Patron, um, welcome Leanna. What types of efforts are being done to educate and engage students' families? Often families do not support children in entering the trades. I am going to turn that over to Aaron due to initially due to his uh, communication campaign that they're running right now um, and see what they're doing. Then I'll speak to the limited experience I have. Uh, so that is a really good question. And um, I don't have any good answers at this point. I think we've talked a lot about it. I don't know if we've come up with any good solutions. Um, I had, um, we had uh, facilitated a, a partnership in the same way that we worked with Lise Crutcher Lewis and Gresham to connect to Anderson Construction and Roosevelt. And one of the ideas thrown around there but never got off the, got off the ground was to have um, Anderson come to the, I forget what it was, but it was a welcome night. Um, incoming uh, students new to Roosevelt High School um, to, to have them lead, not just like a, a presentation, but do the talk, like, like be the key focal point of that engagement for the night. And it would be an opportunity to talk to all, all the parents and all new parents coming into, into the school. So I agree that is a, that is a, a um, um, th that's an area we need to do more work on. Um, and I, I don't think at this point we had a really good, you know, really good plan for that, but hopefully with our communication strategy, that will address that as well. Yeah, I, that's a good point, Erin. I know for another school district that we're currently working with, actually last fall, our project manager was invited to their back to school night and, and he did go and was just available to answer some questions and be a resource. Um, and that, that we felt was a good step in terms of being able to connect those, those uh, groups together, industry with the parents. We through the educator externship, I think we're also trying to leverage the teachers a little bit. 
Um, many, I remember, I think I've done it for uh, every year we've done, I think it's been four years, like Aaron said. And it's always surprising to see how some of the, the educators will come in and really be a little skeptical of the construction industry, whether they're worried about safety or, or different things that those stereotypes are out there, right? And by the end, typically they are 100% construction advocates and, uh, you know, definitely helping us beat that drum. And I think it's a, granted, we're not hitting every teacher every year, but I think that's a slow message that we're trying to get out where those parents and, or where those teachers and counselors are able to help educate the parents as well, that it is a good career, has, provides a good living for folks. Um, so it, it seems to be a, a process of baby steps and we're always looking for the next step to take. I know from, from my work initially in the schools that due to a variety of um, needs and funding sources um, in different districts, they've approached that a little bit differently in terms of student success. They're looking at helping people not on a, you know, not, oh my gosh, you haven't been in school for a few days, why is that? But let's help you accomplish your goals and let's help you navigate the barriers that are stopping those, you know, stopping you from accomplishing them, working at the family level um, and engaging with the schools. And so while I have more work to do on that front as we move these initiatives forward, those questions are really important. And I thank you for asking it because it's something I know I need to keep in the forefront when we're educating. I also know that addressing these career paths, whether it's construction, manufacturing, healthcare, you know, anything really at this point, social service, doing it from a K through 12 perspective to where you're introducing it much earlier and showing that it truly can be a career path. You might start out as, you know, the guy sweeping up on, you know, the job site or the girl sweeping up on the job site, but there's different career paths there and encouraging people to show that there's a true pathway there. And I think that was one of the strengths of uh, the program that was building between Watts Heating and, and Cooling and the Arefco partnership was they were showing them not only on the construction and manufacturing side, but also the supplier side that there could very much be a legitimate career if that was something that they were interested in, giving them a living wage job, a roof over their head, a way to put food in, you know, in them, but then also showing them that there's a variety of different career paths. So I hope that answered your question, Leanna. We'd be all happy, I'm sure, to, to talk more offline. Okay, Kayla uh, Viramontes of the Bold Orange asks, how can we community leaders and business owners support these efforts? Send money. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> That's usually the answer to everything, isn't it? Um, now would be a good time, uh, maybe, Asha, for you to talk about how they could be involved in, uh, in the Work Ready program. Yeah, so the easiest way is to A, contact me, <laughs> um, and B, again, I'll share those link, the link of the business interview. Um, be willing to be open and willing, um, it's a great question, so thank you, be open and willing to different opportunities. So, you know, Stacy and, and her team there, Elise Crutcher, have kind of a big umbrella to work under. Tours, site visits, they brought in another marketing department. We realized that, you know, if you belong to a chamber, you're a mid to small size business, and I'm sure Aaron can speak to this as well, your needs are very different because you're trying to meet payroll and, and get your deadlines met, regardless of what business that you're in. And um, the biggest way is to just be open to different opportunities and be honest about oh, that with me and with yourself or with Aaron, if you're working with him or Stacy. What are you really able to do? You know, a lot of people I find with Heart for Community just want to run in and throw open the doors and do all the things. And that's not really the case. Let's work down and let's work together to be very specific. So don't be afraid to reach out, even if you don't know what those opportunities are. Sometimes getting into the schools, working with, um, with school, uh, scholastic partners takes a few months because you're figuring out which way is best for you to engage. And that's okay. Sometimes it's not immediate. Sometimes it is. Um, but be, be open and willing to say, well, I don't know necessarily what I could teach, but I do know that I'd be willing to engage in a mock interview day, even if it's simply just interviewing students and letting them practice. Um, I'd be engaged in talking about ent entrepreneurship projects. Just be open-minded, I guess, and be willing to work with the program, even if it's maybe not right off the bat. Um, Renee Harding uh, says she works with transitioned youth. She works with Albertina Kerr in placement of jobs uh, 
and internships. This population is largely an untapped workforce in our community. Are you considering in your diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives to include special education students as well? So I, I would agree that, that that's an untapped market. And um, I think we as an association um, could explore that in greater detail. Uh, we do work closely with a lot of um, uh, pre-apprenticeship programs. Um, historically, pre-apprenticeship programs um, were created to work with uh, underrepresented populations to expose them and train them to careers in construction industry. Um, a lot of those careers uh, had not been available and were not accessible to those populations. So those, those organizations um, have done um, a tremendous amount of work. Uh, we're, we're happy to see them grow and being supported um, additionally um, through financing and, 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 and industry partnerships. Um, but we, we would agree that I think um, additional work needs to be done. Um, and um, and the special ed population. I, I, I don't know if we've really thought how to do that well or, or how to approach that. I, I would be interested in having a conversation around that though. Ash, I think we have time for one more question. We need to um, wrap up the, the luncheon hour. So do you want to, is the last question a short one or? It, it, it is, okay. yeah. So um, Leanna uh, Carla Gay of uh, the Director of Innovation and Partnerships at the Gresham Barlow School District uh, would like you to know that the districts in East County are actually actively working to put together a series of educational documents and graphic depictions for educating families and students on multiple pathways towards career success. Um, and I, I please, if I'm speaking out of turn, Carla, let me know, but I believe that um, in addition to that, there will be some translation um, translated materials as well. So that's exciting um, for everybody. And I, I believe now that she mentions that I have seen some of those for both middle school and high school, and they are very exciting uh, pieces of information. It talks about the school districts, it talks about which career paths are available, and it, it's very kind of easily digestible. Thank you, Asha. And Stacy and Aaron, thank you so much for the, the work that you did ahead of time and also the work and your time that you've given us today. I'm sure this is not the last time that we're going to do some interaction, um, but I appreciate so much what you have already done, not just to the community, but to for our members. So there's a couple of things I would like to point out. Um, the Work Ready program is not just for high school. The whole concept is K through 12. And so some of the things that were asked, some of the questions that were asked and uh, going into that direction actually can be uh, better answered if we start earlier. The program at Powell Valley, the kids at Powell Valley, that's a, that's a grade school. They designed, they came up with the idea and they designed the bench and they were side by side with the folks that, that carved the bench, they put the benches together. When you start early, and that's one of the ways that we can educate families that trades are a good um, pathway as well. The earlier you start educating not just the student, but the opportunity to expose the parents to other possibilities for a career path for their son or daughter, the, the better off that is as well. Um, we also have to remember that our work environment, our business work sites look different right now. But I love the virtual idea, and we're going to be doing that. But our work sites, and you, know, you walk into a restaurant, everybody has a mask on, and they're all far apart, and you can't get back where the cook is. And so we'll have to be creative with some of the exposure and the experiences that we're giving our students in terms of the work sites as well. Um, so what the Work Ready program is going to do is going to educate students K through 12, not just the high school kids, K through 12. It's going to educate the teachers. It's going to expose the teachers to work environments. It's going to expose the businesses to how they can use some of their own skill set and bring it into a classroom somehow, either physically into the classroom or virtually into the classroom or the classroom to them. But as Stacy as Stacy pointed out, um, it, you don't have to have a hammer in your hand to be involved in the construction industry. She has 20 years of experience on the accounting end. And also the parents. So we're going to get to expose the parents and maybe the virtual is a great way 
that um, the great opportunity for some of the parents to be involved in different trade opportunities and different career opportunities as well. I'm thrilled that we're doing this program. I am so sorry that COVID has put a speed bump in the implementation of the program, but really what it's done is say, okay, let's slow down and take a look at how broader we can um, supply the services and do a good job with the Work Ready program here at the Chamber. And the businesses are on board. You know, they're slow to come back. They're slow to get back to work because of the, the mandates, but they're eager to involve the community and involve the students and to look to the future. And the future is what the Work Ready program is all about. So actually with that being said, again, I wanna thank Erin, Stacy, and you for doing what you did and thank Angela for all the backup that she, give, that she gave us. Uh, two last comments. Our, the Boeing Company, Columbia Bank, PGE, Gresham Barlow School District and Metro East Community Media are our amazing sponsors for the Business and Leaders Luncheon today. Thank you so much. Next month, we have two speakers. One is going to talk about bridges. The other one's going to talk about preschool. They don't have anything to do with each other, but it's going to be a twofer and it's going to be fun. The following month in September, we're going to try to have two Business and Leaders Luncheons. One for our typical candidate forum, we're going to have state candidates as well as city council candidates from Troutdale as well as Gresham. And the other luncheon is going to be around the, um, the Metro's transportation package, the proponents and the opponents of the Metro transportation package. We're into that season as well. So business and leaders luncheon, the schedule is out there. Take a look at it. Uh, lunch is free unless you pay for it at your at your home. So Asha, again, thank you. You did a great job. I'm proud of you. Stacy and Aaron, good to meet you. And thanks to all of you that welcome, that came and participated in today's luncheon. See you soon. Mm -hmm.